what's going on everyone? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Neat Bar Pro. In a previous video, we covered the Neat Bar with the Neat Pad. Reference that video in the upper corner of this one for a device overview of the Neat Pad. In this video, we're gonna be digging deep on the Neat Bar Pro and just using the Neat Pad as that in-room touch controller to set things up. The Neat Bar Pro is a 4K video collaboration device all in one featuring your audio and video as well as the onboard Android operating system running the Teams Rooms app. Before we get into the device overview and setting it up and demoing it, quick reminder that if you're not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button below, throw a like on the video if you find it helpful, share with all your colleagues and friends on your social media networks, and with the shameless self-promotion out of the way, let's get to the Neat Bar Pro. The Neat Bar Pro does come in a fairly large box, difficult to get all on camera from this angle. We get it open, we get our welcome message, let's get started. Neat Bar Pro gives us a little bit of a diagram for plugging in and getting off to the races as far as connecting your Neat Pad to a power adapter or a PoE port, and then following the setup on the Neat Pad. This top box is just a little bit of filler, a little bit of padding to fill in the space. Right up top, we've got our Neat Bar Pro laying at the front in a plastic wrap. We've got mounting components all laid out at the very top. The table stand, and we are not going to mount this to the display or the wall. A mounting component for underneath of the Neat Bar Pro. A small little Allen wrench is included. And another mounting component. These mounting components have a QR code on them. This is for the wall mount. If you want to do the wall mount, you'd use that QR code to see how to do that. Down below, we've got more optional mounting components. This is for our displays. Power cable. That's our first glance of the Neat Bar Pro. Tilting the box over so you can see the rest of what's inside, we've got the documentation over on the left-hand side. We've got some mounting hardware and Allen wrenches right here. Additional cabling, our RJ45 cable, etc., and a little bit more optional mounting hardware laying in the middle at the bottom. And with everything but the neat bar on the table, you can see all of our different cables. We've got our HDMI cable here our RJ45 cable off to the left, power cable at the far left, various mounting hardware components, our documentation. We've got our table stand and the pieces that attach to this table stand. And finally, optional wall and screen mounts at the back. The Neat Bar Pro features three full range speakers, an onboard subwoofer, opposing drivers, and a 16 microphone array. The onboard optics feature two 50 megapixel lenses, both a telephoto and wide angle lens. The Neat Bar Pro also features a depth sensor and a combined 16 times total zoom. The optics offer a horizontal field of view from 70 degrees all the way up to 113 degrees. In addition to the depth sensor, the Neat Bar Pro also has a wake up sensor and sensors for air quality, humidity, temperature, orientation, and light. Coming around to the back, we see our ports are all set to where the cables will come down toward the bottom, able to be routed out the back. We've got a reset button on the far left, a USB-C port next to it, up to three different displays. Obviously, Microsoft Teams Rooms only supports the two external displays, but for other applications like Zoom, a third display is supported. We've got an HDMI ingest port, our Ethernet port here, you can also connect the device to Wi-Fi, so Ethernet is optional. You have your aux port for future audio, external audio capabilities, and our power. At the very bottom, we have the mechanism that will be used to connect into the provided hardware for setting this on a desk stand, if that is the mounting configuration we choose. All right, to help with our lighting here, we'll pull the neat pad up. Now we are beginning setup. So all we've done is plugged in our neat pad with a PoE uh, ethernet cable. So we've got power and it's gonna walk us through setup. We're gonna leave our language selected as English. We'll say continue. And then we gotta choose our setup. Are we doing the neat bar, neat bar pro, adding a neat pad for room availability, or adding a neat pad to the meeting board? 
We're going to say Neat Bar Pro. That is our setup today, and we say continue. With that, we have a mounting guide. So we're either going to set up for the table, wall, or screen. And uh, either way, if it's screen, it's going to be above or below. If it's wall, it's going to be above or below. And then table. Now, we're going to use table for our setup. So we will say table setup. No, we can skip this whole thing up here if we don't need guidance. But this will let us know how to set up our Neat Bar Pro. So we need to find the following components that are in the box. We've got the stand, that little piece that goes under the bottom of the Neat Bar that will slide into the stand, and of course our cables. We see that we take that stand, we take that other piece, slide it right into the top and use that provided Allen wrench to tighten it down and into place. Say next, we've got our neat bar. The neat bar on that bottom is going to have the pieces that slide on, or they, they, they kind of open up, they point downward. We'll take those and connect our power in, as well as all our other cables, get them all pointing down where they need to be. And with our cables in place, slide those prongs into the provided mounts, and we are set up and ready to go with our neat bar in a table mount. Sorry, neat bar pro. And finally, we'll connect those HDMI cables to the back of your TV screen. If we want to release the neat bar, we can see how you would tilt it all the way to the front, slide it forward, and we can remove the neat bar from its mounts. And with that, we have completed our mounting and cable setup. Let's get to powering it on. After we've gone through the mounting wizard here, we see that our neat pad is connected to the internet. We can connect using Wi-Fi. We can go to our network settings. Uh, we'll skip those. We're connected. That's what matters here. You'll change your time zone to meet, be what you need it to be. And on the next screen, we are told to select our neat bar. We are doing the neat bar pro, but uh, that's just the verbiage on the screen. So we see that serial number. It does indeed match which is what is on our display on the uh, the two displays mounted to the wall, so we'll select it. We'll say continue. We hear some lovely musical notes indicating that we are paired with a neat bar. So continue if the same serial number is shown on your TV. It is indeed shown on the TV. Hit continue. An update is available. Let's go ahead and take care of that before we get to uh, signing into Teams. And now we go through the update process. And after applying the update, the system reboots. When it reboots, we are confirmed again that we are paired with the Neat Bar Pro. We'll say continue. You can opt in for your analytics and improvements here. Uh, since we're just demoing, I'm going to go ahead and opt out. We'll say continue. And now you choose your platform. Are we running Zoom Rooms or Microsoft Teams? Because Neat Bar Pro is newly certified for Microsoft Teams. Given uh, the videos I do on this channel, for the most part, we will select Microsoft Teams. We'll say continue. It goes through a process of installing the Teams Rooms app, and we need to make sure not to unplug either the Neat Pad or the Neat Bar Pro during the process. And after a very nice musical note indicating success, which I did not capture on video, unfortunately, we get the message saying, you're all set. Microsoft Teams is now ready. So we'll say launch Microsoft Teams. We see the neat screen briefly, and then we're over to the Teams logo. And as we see on both the left-hand screen as well as our neat pad, we've got instructions to sign into Microsoft Teams. After signing in at our browser at the desk across the room, uh, we have signed into both the Neat Bar Pro, and then we signed into the Neat Pad. Got to sign in both places; they are paired. And then when they're both signed in using the same account. We'll come on over to the neat pad and validate this connection once more. Now back over on our neat pad, very difficult to make this out because uh, there is a, the lighting is just off. But we have a purple box here with our neat bar pro and the correct serial number in there. We'll click on that. And uh, once we do, it says to enter the pairing code displayed on the device up top. Now it says neat frame in there. I think we've got some interesting verbiage. But as I look up to our main screen, we do indeed have a code that is visible. So we'll input that code onto our neat pad. 
and be off to the races. With our code entered, we say pair. We see that it says setting up the device, and now we are all set. And we have our Microsoft Teams Rooms screen. Teams Room is on Android. It says Neatbar Pro up in the top there. And uh, we're ready to take a look at some settings. Now to make this a little easier, I've gone into our settings, turned our screen brightness all the way down so that we can actually see what's on screen a little better. You'll see like any other Teams Rooms on Android, uh, touch controller, we've got our Meet Now, our Share button. We click on our three dots there. Again, Meet Now, Share, Feedback button, Volume Control right here, and then Settings. Under Settings, you're going to get your profile that's signed in, ability to report an issue about the device, serial numbers, part numbers, all that kind of stuff, and then we say Device Settings. Now here, this gives us information about our pairing to the Neat Bar Pro. We've got accessibility features in here, high contrast mode, screen reader, font size, color correction. Uh, but then we've got our audio and video. This is where things start to get interesting for us. We have our auto framing turned on by default, and I like that. We will leave it on. Now, do we want to do this for individuals or for the group? Obviously, with group, we're talking about uh, the ability of the cameras to detect a group of individuals um, and as people come and go, the camera will continue to reframe to include only those individuals. With the individual setting, we get our neat symmetry capability there. That's where when we have multiple people in the room, we'll get up to four individual boxes on the screen representing those individuals rather than a group shot. So we'll go ahead and leave individuals uh, selected for the time being. We're going to go over to our subject boundary. This is off. It's beta. By default, it's off. You can turn it on if you want. Um, and then you kind of set the width and depth. How far back in the room, how far to the side do you want before the individual on screen can no longer be detected by the AI? Kind of helpful if you're in a glass conference room and you don't want people walking by in the hallway to be detected by the onboard AI. We'll skip that for now, again, leaving it off because it's a better feature. In our anti-banding mode, we have this set to default. We can take this over to 50 or 60 hertz. We've got our uh, display preference here, higher resolution ver versus lower latency. We'll stick with the higher resolution. And those are our audio and video settings. Now, again, on the subject boundary, if you want to see that in action, check out the video in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, that goes to our neat bar with neat pad video where we did demo the subject boundary capabilities. Coming back out to this uh, menu, if we go to system, you can do software updates, get your about info, share device analytics with neat. Right here, I mentioned to turn my screen brightness all the way down for demo purposes. Auto wake up. So to conserve energy, the neat pad will automatically wake up and, uh, and sleep based on the presence of people in the room. Off by default, but might be a great one to turn on if you're Worried about that? Room status indicator LEDs, they are on, they can be turned off, and if they're on, you can determine how bright they are. And then remote access, off by default, we can turn that on. When enabled, you can access the device settings via a web browser. Pretty handy for remote management capabilities. And finally, we can restart the device from our system menu. Going back out, we have admin settings. Now this wants us to put in the password. This will be the password of the, or the last six, six digits by default of the neat pad. So use that to get in, reset the password as a best practice. With the password in play, you've got all of your admin settings in here. Bluetooth can be turned on and off. Time and language settings, your network settings. If we wanted to change to Wi-Fi instead of a wired ethernet connection, you could do that. Teams admin settings, going into there, we see that we've got our calling settings, meeting settings, wallpapers we can change, console pairing, and then the ability to sign out of Teams from this screen right here. Not going to mess with any of that. We've done that in other videos. Again, I will refer to the uh, neat bar video if you want to dig a little deeper. We go down to debug. This is where we can reset our custom configurations if we've made any. We can also reset the device to factory defaults. We can change our password. Again, that is a best practice recommendation. Don't leave it as those six digits that are the last six of the serial number. Change it to something that makes sense for your organization. Sign out of the admin, sign out from Teams, and that takes us to the end of our system settings here. We'll close that window. Now, for a brief Microsoft Teams demo, I have invited myself to the meeting 
uh, over on my laptop across the room. Turned off audio and video, uh, and on that side, turned off audio on this side so that we don't have weird feedback as I'm demoing the video here. We're not gonna go super in depth on video demo. Again, uh, there is a separate video on Neat Symmetry. I will link to that up in the top as well, and a separate video on the Neat Bar where I demonstrate some of the modes for other AI capabilities. In this video, we just wanna showcase the fact that we have symmetry selected. I have joined the Teams meeting. We see the Neat Bar Pro finding me. And even though I'm just one individual, so I've got my own box, I don't have other individuals in the room that need their boxes, it will still continue to follow me. So even if I had uh, my own separate box with three other people in here having their own separate box, I can move around the room and as I do, the Neat Bar and rather the Neat Bar Pro in a rather fluid motion follows me around the room, and uh, and we continue to do that in my own separate Brady Bunch box as well. So, quick demo of using the Neat Bar Pro in a Microsoft Teams room. This is the video capability of speaker following throughout the room using the symmetry setting, and of course with the group setting the whole group continues to be captured. So as that group expands outward or shrinks inward, uh, the, the camera will adjust the picture to fit just the group and not waste space on the sides. Hopefully this demo has been helpful demonstrating the responsiveness, the fluidness of the AI on board with the Neat Bar Pro as we are using it in the individual's framing mode. While we are still in the call, as you'll see on our main screen here, uh, my hands turn red as I touch the sides. That is because the neat pad can be either a center of room touch controller or the scheduling panel on the outside of the room. It's got these LEDs on the side. They are red, as we see now, they glow red when the room is in use. They can be green uh, when it is not in use, showing that the room is available. Uh, and on screen here, we've got our regular Teams Rooms meeting menu. Uh, we have our different gallery options. When there are gallery options there, it's just two people, so it's pretty limited at the moment. We can share. We have all of our regular options here for handling the call, our dial pad, putting the call on hold, volume control, turning our video on and off, as well as muting. And finally, we can hang up the call when we are all done. Hanging up the call, we'll end it, and then of course, as we go back out to the side, we see that we no longer have a red LED. Uh, when it is a scheduling panel, there are LEDs showing availability when not in use. But as a touch controller, you simply have no glow when the room is ready for the next meeting. And there it is, the Neat Bar Pro, newly certified for Microsoft Teams, alongside the Neat Pad as our center of room touch controller. Again, that Neat Pad can be a scheduling panel for outside the room connected to the same Microsoft Teams Room account. If you found the video helpful, please throw a like on the video here on YouTube, share it with all your friends and colleagues on social media, and if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, I don't know why, hit that subscribe button below, and I hope that we'll see you back here for the next device overview video.